Hi, everybody. Great to be here. My name is Russ Peterson, and I found the best recipe for strawberry shortcake. I was watching the Food Network, and the host, Mary Nolan, came on with this great recipe. And she said a very interesting thing while she was making this, that we should think globally, but eat locally. And I love this because I think this relates to what we're doing in this town as musicians, is that we need to think globally, but we play locally. I've been in Fargo now about 16 years. This great college over in Moorhead hired me, Cordia, <coughs> and I was there. <laughs> and seriously, when I got here about 16 years ago, I thought, I don't know where I am, but I'll be here maybe a year or two, and then I'm going to go off to the big city. Because that's where musicians go. We go to the big city. And I realized that Fargo is the kind of place that you can make things happen. There's great things in this town. There's three world-class colleges. There's a great symphony and an opera. And there's plenty for musicians to do. Uh, and a lot of uh, outstanding musicians moving to town all the time. So there, there was a time when this was not true, that we could not make it happen in a town the size of Fargo. That you had to be, if you were going to be global and you were going to have any kind of international outreach as a musician or an artist, you had to be in New York. You had to be in Los Angeles or Paris or somewhere where you were global. But this beautiful thing came along for us living in these little towns now. And all you need is two things. A computer with the internet and a musician's best friend, YouTube. <laughs> the interesting thing about the group that's going to play for you here tonight is we do most of our, 90%, I would say, of our playing in this town. We teach in this town. We record our CDs in this town. We, uh, and we perform in this town. Sometimes even, I'm playing maybe four or five times a week in this town. There's lots to do and uh, a very receptive audience to it. Uh, we do occasionally make some out-of-town trips. This group has played around the country in the last few years, and I'm happy to say that in two weeks we'll be in Scotland performing at the World Saxophone Convention. <laughs> which is, yes. <laughs> which, which is about the geekiest thing that you could ever do. <laughs> it's, it's true. And then after that, the week after that, we'll fly to northern Italy and we'll play at the, the Faenza International Saxophone Festival, which is a little town near Bologna, right on the northeastern coast. It's beautiful. Um, so even though it is possible to, uh, that we're making as much of a global impact as we can on the internet and, and playing a lot in town, uh, it's amazing that I'm, one is able to reach an international audience uh, nowadays without the use of things that we did in the past, which like publishers. So the music that I'm selling nowadays because of the internet, things on YouTube and Facebook and, and web page, uh, I'm able to sell hundreds of my compositions, with, which might not sound a, like a lot to you. If you're a business, you sell billions of things. But in music, when when you sell saxophone music and you can sell hundreds of something, you're hitting a very interesting uh, niche in things. But we're able to do this nowadays without the help of publishers and without the help of any kind of advertisement. And to me, this is unprecedented in music. This has never happened before. One of the pieces that that's happened with, I'd like to talk about and maybe play for you tonight with my two friends. Um, the piece that we're going to play for you, I wrote three years ago. And it's in three movements, or three sections. We're just going to play the second and the third section of this piece. And this ties in a little bit with this global concept because uh, composers nowadays like to use world music when they're composing things. Uh, back in the 19th century, composers took great pride in writing music that was from their region. Composers like Dvorak and Smetna and... Um, these composers would use like folk melodies from their home. But nowadays, with our global reach, we love to include all kinds of music uh, other than what we have in our country. So the second movement of this piece that we're going to play for you is based on a Middle Eastern 
kind of folk song. And the flute player and I will actually imitate these Middle Eastern instruments called the duduk. It's a, like an Armenian oboe. It's a beautiful instrument. Uh, I've got lots of recordings of this thing, and I'm always sitting at home with my saxophone trying to imitate this thing. So I finally started putting on paper kind of what these people do. So that's what we'll be doing in the second movement. And it's kind of based on a Middle Eastern scale. Uh, and there's this very funky middle section. So we're kind of including kind of uh, my pianist, Jay Hirschberg, who gets very groovy in the second movement. <laughs> but we're still kind of Middle Eastern, but kind of funky. It's real fun. And the last movement that we'll play for you is totally meant to show off. It's very fast and very loud. And what's beautiful about writing for your friends is my friends, in particular, are what we call virtuosos in the music business. That means they can play absolutely anything I write. They take it, and they eat it up, and they spit it back out at me. Is that all you got, Russ? <laughs> so this piece was trying to challenge them. And every time we come into rehearsal, somehow they end up playing it faster and faster than I had originally planned on it. So if you don't mind, I'm going to introduce my friends. We are the Excelsior Trio on flute. We're going to have Deb Harris come up and play for you. She's an assistant professor at Concordia College. <laughs> and on piano, this is Dr. Jay Hirschberger from Concordia College. <laughs> <laughs> 